Hi guys, welcome back. Queen Osset here. In this video, I am going to do a walkthrough of a brand new tarot deck. Now, many of you are familiar with this author. She is well loved on the interwebs and she is well loved in the tarot community. You all know her by this book, 365 Tarot Spreads. And of course, spells, and you could tell this is a galley copy that I have when it came out a couple years ago, came into the store. And she's got a brand new book. If you are an RWS fan, aficionado, get this book. Yes, I'm encouraging you to get a book. I'm a bibliophile. I know books take up a lot of room and all of that, but if it's a tarot book, I'm going to get it. We'll go through that book in a little bit. But the book that introduced me to Sasha Graham was this book, Tarot Diva. And I know it looks cutesy and all of that, but this was my tome back in the day. This book and Tarot Plain and Simple by Anthony Lewis. This book came out in, oh gosh, um, I don't know. The first printing was 2011. This is one of, one of my tomes. The reason I loved it, it says, ignite your intuition, glamorize your life, and unleash your fabulosity. I mean, this book, don't underestimate the power of learning to row using this book. I know that we use a lot of... There's a lot of serious books out there written by serious authors, you know, Duque and Place and all of that. But this diva, I like to have fun in my life. I take my studies very seriously, but while I'm studying, I get it easier if the information that's being imparted is fun, you know? You just it just makes learning things easier. But one of the things I had loved about this book, she has Oh gosh, things that you can do um, if you're the tower card, you know, the risk taker, <laughs> tower wardrobe staples, rubber mini skirt, feather accessories, fishnets, and yeah, I did rock some fishnets, um, tower style I icons, drag queens, Madonna, Lady Gaga, Gwen Stefani, um, your secret weapon is the unexpected. She talks about, she has recipes in here, like for the emperor. I don't know if you can see any of that. Uh, recipes. She has a bath in here that I thoroughly enjoy. Let me see if I can find it now. Of course I can't find it. And highlighted it. Yes. Forgiveness Milk Moon Bath. I highlighted it. And she talks about how it's related to the Two of Swords. Um, finding peace with yourself and finding peace with others. And then doing this bath allows you to forgive yourself and forgive others as well. And then she also says in here, different things you can do when you run into certain, let's say certain cards, like certain actions that you can take. Um, Four of Pentacles. A pay yourself first exercise. This deck, I'm sorry, this deck, this book is it's informative, it's like a workbook, it's um it just it just has everything in it if you're working with Tarot on a totally different level. I know that people, you know, you might think, oh, diva, it can't be serious. I'm telling you, this book is good for healing, it's good for self-empowerment, and you get so much knowledge and information regarding the cards. I was able to learn so much and uh, develop so many different layers in regards to reading for myself and for others. You know, keeping that, keeping your readings down to earth, I mean, they're wonderful when they go esoteric, and I have to tell you, after reading for so many decades, when I hear some of these interpretations, I always want to ask, well, how does that apply to my everyday life? 
you know, I'm coming to you for a reading about what's going on in my relationships or my job situation, and you're giving me all this esoteric crap that I can't swallow. I need to be able to walk away with something tangible. I need to be able to walk away with something that's empowering. And this book, don't overlook it. Get this book. I think you can probably even find it used somewhere. I don't know. Okay. But it just says, grow into your deliciously divine self. So once again, Sasha Graham has done it. Sasha Graham has put out a tarot deck. Can you see that? called The Haunted House. And yes, it's kitschy and it's cute and I adore it actually. I like the story behind it. Again, I'm not expecting it to be a diverse deck. I'm just so over so many things. But one of the things that I like that she talks about in here was that um, she tapped into the great tradition of gothic romance paperback novels that existed in the 60s and the 70s um, as women strive to find equal footing with their male counterparts. These delectable drugstore novels contain evocative and haunting cover art. These novels, without exception, portray a beautiful woman dashing from a creepy house. The house is the metaphor for the woman who conquers what lay inside the walls and inside herself. She says the Haunted House Tarot was inspired by these romantic covers along with her adoration of creepy movies and a deep love of the supernatural and the macabre. The world is mysterious and you are the star of your narrative, the heroine in the novel. Cast your cards and choose wisely. And remember, always remember, you hold the power, you are the key. And I just love what she says. Um, to enter the deck, you may read these words aloud. Your heart pumps like an engine. Every cell of your body is alive and alert. Your hair flies widely in the sea wind. The limousine's taillights glow red like demon eyes growing smaller as they drive away, leaving the blackness to envelop you like a cloak. You look toward the hailing or rather hulking mansion. The windows reflect consciousness as if the inner sanctum of the house is humming with sentient power. You smile, daring that house to make the first move. And so we begin the journey with the Fool card. And she says through every card, the fool is experiencing something. So of course, before we get through the cards, you know what? I'm going to do this my way. I'm going to show you the cards. This is a deck put out by Llewellyn. It's a Los Garabeo. If you're familiar with Los Garabeo, then you know the card stock is thin, flexible. This is the back of the deck. And I want to say, you can read it in reverse, too. You've got the mansion and the moon and the sea. All right. So, I showed you the fool. The butler as the magician. Who is this lady? And this one, the Empress. The Emperor. Oh my. Look at that hair font. Is he there to perform an exorcism? L'amour, l'amour. Do you see the woman in the mirror or the picture frame? I'm going to take a look. The chauffeur. Isn't the chauffeur who always knows the secrets? 
I know, the chauffeur, the butler. This is a different strength card. She's looking at herself. That's a mirror image. See the infinity symbol around her neck? Look at this hermit. And there she is watching him. The wheel with the clock. Oh boy. Oh. There's always someone in a haunted house that has this demeanor, this look. And sometimes they might actually turn out to be the kindest person. Death card. Oh, sorry, hangman rather. Buried in the walls. We have the death card here. <laughs> Temperance. The devil. Oh, the tower. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> the star. The moon. Sun. Judgment. I think this is more than an actual resurrection. This seems like a rescue. The world. Ace of Cups. Two of Cups. Three of Cups. I think we're going to take a look at that card. Four of Cups. Five. Six. I'm going to see what this is in the booklet. Is this remembering, giving to your younger self, remembering things past? Should be interesting to see. Seven of Cups. So of course, you know, this is a Rider Waite Smith based deck. Seems easy enough to read. <laughs> Look at the portrait behind this gentleman. Interesting. I just said it's a right away Smith deck, so if there was any doubt about that, there you go. The Nine of Cups. Uh, the Ten of Cups here. Page of Cups. <clears throat> Unite. And of course, you know, with most Los, Los Garbeo decks, I actually appreciate that this one is borderless. You don't have multiple languages around the edge of the cards. You do have multiple languages in the little white book, though. 
and you have the insignia down at the bottom there whether it's king or queen and then their symbol oh, ace of pentacles very clear <laughs> Well, who are they? Look at that. Ugh. Seven of Pentacles. Eight. I want to take a look at that too. Here in the nine. So she goes from being trapped in the Eight of Pentacles to actually being free. She has a, an owl. Oh, look at that. Ten of Pentacles. I'm going to take a look at that card for sure. Here's your knight. your knight. This is your knight. This is your queen. Is that a hair? Yes, it is. And your king of pentacles. Ace of wands. Two of Wands, making a decision to walk forward, to move forward. Three of Wands, time to venture forth, investigate the unknown. <laughs> Four of Wands. Five of Wands. Wow, seven. Uh, this adds another layer to that. Um, you know, this is your card of your warrior. Fighting off adversity, not allowing yourself to be overcome by so many things that could overwhelm you, overcome you. But that fire um, has a potential of going unleashed. Anyway, Eight of Wands there. Nine. Ten. Really? I don't know. I'm going to see what she says about this in the book. There's your page of wands. Is that a merry-go-round in the background? Yes, it is. You know, the pages and the knights seem to be um, you know, the pages have horses. I think I'm going to take a look at that again. And this knight has bats. That page had horses. And we're so used to seeing knights with a horse to indicate that movement. The queen of wands. Chic. Chic. 
elegant. Is that a grand piano? Yes, it is. Oh, the king of wands. Rescue me. <laughs> oh, my. Yes. Rescue me. Let's see. Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. I don't know. Are we blinded by our passion sometimes? That could have us feeling stuck. Oh. Three of Swords. <laughs> Look at that Four of Swords. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Let's sleep with the lights on tonight. Who knows what's beneath your bed? I know what's beneath mine. A bunch of shoes. Here we are. Six of Swords. Are we leaving a cemetery here? What are we leaving? No, we're not. Um, a wharf. I see water. There's a ship in the background. Lightning. You know, this doesn't look like your lying, thieving, cheating sort of card, does it? It looks like someone who is oh, using her mental acuity to remove the danger or be prepared for impending danger, you know, put herself at an advantage. Eight of Swords. course nine it's not different ten wonder who that is it's a gentleman there's a black hat by his side okay page Night. I don't know if I like this Queen of Swords. But you know, it's a haunted house. You're not supposed to. Ooh. Okay. So, the little white book has, of course, a spread here. She says. The ocean scent is an overwhelming, is as overwhelming as the crashing waters repeated thunder against the worn and earthy moss creeps across the walls. The whipping wind gusts are fresh and alive, especially compared to the stale airplane air you have just endured. The distant stale airplane, <laughs> the distant pines whistle while the taste of excitement spreads across your velvet tongue, your eyes trace the house. Its expansive roof, curling gables, and hundreds of windows glow brighter. The door opens. Won't you come in? The fire is crackling. The brandy is decanting. This isn't any old house. Oh no. This is the house of your wildest dreams and your deepest nightmares. The house calls to you because you've always displayed uncanny gifts. You've always known how to walk a fine line between opposing emotions. Somehow you manage to meet them in the middle. You navigate the space between eroticism and fear. You understand both. <laughs> 
You understand both lead to goosebumps and shivers. You use them for all they are worth. Fear and romance both have you breathless. It wakes you up from the inside and puts you on alert. You've never been more alive than you are at this very moment. This is why the house calls to you now. A darkness is coming. The haunted house, the haunted house's incubants, inhabitants holds the key. They are the last gasp for hope for keeping civilization together. Raven Winsworth has been summoned to this mansion on the cliffs overlooking a moonlit ocean. The house is not empty. Forgotten archetypes gather inside its walls. Journey with Raven as she meets them, one card at a time. Will Raven see the house and the archetypes for who they really are? Can she remind them of their power before it was too late? Will she gather the fool's power for herself? And most importantly, will she discover the greatest secret of all? Will she realize that she, like you, are the sign you've been looking for? Will you and Raven finally uncover the world's best kept secret? That you have held the key all along. So, we are going to join Raven Winsworth, and that's who is depicted in this deck on this journey through the haunted house. I shall sit down and introduce myself to her and let's see what she has to say. There's an interesting spread in the book. Of course, you know, as you said, typical low scarabeo. I don't know if you can see that clearly. That's what, two, four, six, eight card spread. Depictions, of course, I, oh, each suit has something. So the cups are the inspiration of the angels. The pentacles are the legacy of the witches. The wands are the passion of the vampires. And the swords are the pondering of demons. Let's see. She said here for Raven in the Fool card. This is Raven Winsworth, the protagonist. Your journey has begun. The adventure starts and what has started cannot be stopped. Innocence, beginning, potential, pilgrimage, open, and madness. Oh. Okay, and another card that I was interested in was this Ten of Pentacles. Actually, all the tens, wow. Let's just see real quickly, and then I'll let you go. Ten of Pentacles here. Let's see. Ten of Pentacles. The Book of Life. The material world and the house you build is the crust of thin exterior wrapping around infinity. Look deeper. Hmm. Okay, Ten of Wands, that's my curiosity, Ooh. this is called The Burning. The heat and passion of fire is too great to bear. The flames consume, reaching a fever pitch and burning out so you may begin again. Oh, okay. And the Ten of Swords, the pondering of demons. And it says, the ending, or is it? The story is over. The chakras are activated. A new day begins. Are you ready to wake up? <laughs> and that, folks, puts me at the completion of this walkthrough. If you get this deck, let me know how you work with it, what you like about it. Again, you know, I'm a Sasha Graham fan. Again, I'm going to say, don't overlook this book. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Take care, have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.